I came across a collection of questions for atheists designed to be conversation starters. Figured I'd take a shot at responding to them. Let's take a look. First question, where did the universe come from? So most people, Christians or not, believe that the universe originated through the Big Bang. Now, the question is, what caused the Big Bang? If you're an atheist, I think this is a really tough question to answer because if there's no God, there'd be no universe. It just, it doesn't make sense. The law of causality states that everything that begins has a cause, and if the universe has no cause, then it shouldn't exist, you know? You know what I'm saying? We don't know what caused the universe. There are a few ideas out there, but we don't know for certain. We do have evidence that there was an expansion about 13 billion years or so ago, give or take a few millennia, but we don't know what caused it. The Big Bang was not the origin of the universe, but the expansion of it. Now, you can claim that it was created by an intelligent outside force, but this brings up more questions. If the universe had a cause, why did it have to be an intelligence that deliberately created it? And if it was an intelligence behind everything, and everything had to have a cause, what was the cause of this intelligent being? Does your deity get special pleading? Or, if they can exist without a cause, why can't the universe itself? Your claims that the universe was created by an intelligent being are just that. Claims. How do you know the universe was created by an intelligence? All I'm saying is that I don't know, so I'm not going to slot creator deity into my ignorance. And I don't know is the best, or at least most honest, answer to give when you don't know something. Second question is, where do you find your identity? Now this can seem confusing at first, but I think it's really important, because where your identity comes from tells you who you are. So, for example, let's think about it this way. So, if you're a Christian, you obviously find your identity in Christ. If you're a Muslim, you find your identity in the Quran and Islam. But if you're an atheist, where does that identity come from? Where, where's, What makes you? You, you know? I find my identity through the life I've lived and the experiences I've had. As I grow and learn and experience this life, I take in new knowledge, learn from it, and grow as a human being. As I look back on who I was in the past, I'm no longer the same person I was. I'm more open-minded, but much less hair. Thanks for that. And that's one of the great things about living. I'm not stuck in the identity I was once in. Growing and changing as a person is one of the best things about being human. We can look at ourselves, see who we are, and if we don't like the person we are, we can change. Now, admittedly, not many people are very introspective, not willing to look at who they are, and even less are willing to make that change, but it is possible. Not to be pandering, but I'm sure that my audience is full of intelligent, insightful folks who are constantly evaluating themselves and change to become better people. My identity has changed dramatically many times over my lifetime. Yeah, I was going to say dramatically, but... Halfway through, it changed massively and ran with it. Dramatically, it's going to catch on. It's a perfectly cromulent word. My identity used to be that I was a kid who didn't know what he was doing or what he wanted to do with his life. Then to being a father, and then adding to that a husband. I wasn't born with a set identity or one that was imposed on me. It's something I've grown and developed over the decades I've been alive. Third question, how should we live? So I think that if you're a Christian, it's obviously to glorify Jesus. If you're a Muslim, to follow Islam, Hindu, you know, all these religions have answers to this question. But if you're an atheist, is there an answer? Does life have purpose? Because it really doesn't. I mean, you may say your goal is to help people or to raise a family, but what good is that if everyone ends up dead? There's really no point of your life. At least I would say so. I don't know about everybody else, but I live by enjoying the time we have here. Sure, there's no set purpose to our lives. That means we can live however we want to, and apply any purpose we feel is important. And yes, those lives are going to end, but that doesn't mean we just have to focus on that. Many people turn inwards and become nihilistic, thinking that the universe is pointless and uncaring, so why bother doing anything? But I take the opposite approach, an anti-nihilist if you will. Yes, there is no higher purpose in the world, and in the end we're all going to be gone, so why not do what we can to live this one life we're lucky to have, and make things better for the world around us? From the point of view of the universe, we may only exist as a blip in time unnoticeable. But to us, these lives last a lifetime, and the world is full of people trying to make it through the darkness, so why not light a candle for them? We have to take care of each other because, honestly, we're the only ones that will. Like there's no great glorious end to all this. If nothing we do matters, then all that matters is what we do. Because if there's no bigger meaning than the smallest act of kindness, it's the greatest thing in the world. In the end, yeah, there is no point to our lives, so I get to choose my own. 
and I choose to be the best father to my children, the best husband to my wife, and of course, the world's greatest lover. Yeah, that last one's not happening. Love you too, baby. You're right in that everybody dies, but just because life ends at some point doesn't mean that we can't enjoy the time we do have and make things better for others. My youngest daughter is gone, but we managed to get a lot of living in the time we did have. My eldest daughter has gone through some tumultuous times, and I'm sure will go through much more, but I can be there to, hopefully, help her through them. Be good to others, not despite the fact that, as you said, everybody ends up dead, but because of that. This is the only life we've got, and we shouldn't spend the time we have focused on the end of it, but at the time we do have. Enjoy it. Treasure it. The world can be amazing, and don't let the fact that we only have this brief moment to experience it take away from the time we do have. We're here. Isn't that enough? Um, question number four. Where does your morality come from? This is probably the biggest question for an atheist, because without God, can we really have morality? Is there a moral difference between Mother Teresa and Hitler? I mean, if you have a religious worldview, there is obviously a definite morality where morality comes from, but if you don't believe in God, there's no standard of morality. You can't, there's no way to address a moral conflict with someone else because it's merely someone's opinion versus their another one's opinion, you know? It's simple enough. I get my morality from the harm principle. Basically, does an action cause harm to another? If it does, does that harm have at least a reciprocal amount of good? If you're hurting somebody for no reason, that's immoral. It's basic empathy. We evolved to care about others because a society that doesn't harm one another has a better chance to thrive than one where everybody's out for number one and there's no trust in the community. If everybody works together, we can all reap the rewards. The ability to empathize with others can apparently be traced back to mirror neutrons. These are structures that have been found in the primate brain, and yes, we are primates, that fire the same way if we experience something and if the same action was observed happen to others. In other words, we feel the same when we observe another in pain as when we experience such pain ourselves. This gave us the ability to associate harm that comes to others with pain that we've experienced. I'm content to let people live the lives they want to up until the point their actions cause harm, at which point society should step in to protect those being harmed. You ask the difference between Mother Teresa and Hitler. Well, they both harmed others, but one did much, much more harm. Several million people perished under Hitler's genocide, whereas Teresa seemed to be under the impression that housing the sick and dying without proper medical treatment and letting them suffer was a good way to treat people at the end of their lives. So, I guess the difference between the two was how deliberate the suffering they caused was and the scale it happened on. Next question. Where will you go when you die? This is a very serious question, and this is the only question that really matters in terms of after we die, because we're all going somewhere. If you're an atheist, I mean, it's really nothing, you know? You just void nothing. It's just, you know, like before you were born. So it's kind of lame. Um, it'd be kind of disappointing, you know? So I think this is a really good question, because you got to focus not just on the present, but where you're going to live in the future, you know? after you die, you know? Okay. Where am I gonna go when I die? Well, I'm not sure. Either donate my organs to those in need, or send my whole body to a university for med students to learn on. It's a hard call. In the former, some people get the immediate benefit of any useful organs I had, and in the latter, my body might help some med student become a better doctor and save many lives. In any event, I want whatever isn't used to be cremated and laid to rest with the rest of my family. But I'm assuming you're talking about my personality. What makes me, well, me. It'll be gone. As far as we can tell, our personality is made of the electrochemical reactions in our brains. Once brain functions cease, then our personalities, and what we think of as us, will just stop working. You may not find it a happy thought. You might find it lame or disappointing that no matter how good or bad people have been, they end up with the same fate, and there's no glorious afterlife for you or punishment for those you dislike. But the universe doesn't care if we like what happens to us. The existence of an eternal soul or deity running everything does not hinge on whether we like the idea or not. As you said, it's just like, you know, like before you were born. But between those periods of non-existence is this thing called life. It may not be long, but we do have a chance to live it. And I'm not going to waste my life lamenting about how it will end at some point when I could be enjoying it now. One minute you're waiting for the sky to fall Next you're dazzled by the beauty of it all